Hello, I am Minecraft Phenom08, and welcome to a short tutorial on how to build a fluid cooled nuclear reactor from the mod Industrial Craft 2. So let's get started. The first thing you will need to do is actually make four different types of blocks, and they are shown right here. They are the reactor pressure vessel, the reactor fluid port, the reactor redstone port, and the reactor access hatch. I believe that you need all four of them to actually make a structure that is operational. Uh, for any practical purposes, that is. And uh, the crafting recipes are above. Now, for the reactor pressure vessel, you need four stone and five of the lead plates. For the reactor access hatch, you will need eight reactor pressure vessels and a trapdoor. For the reactor redstone port, you will need eight of the reactor pressure vessels and a redstone uh, piece of redstone dust. And for the reactor fluid port, you will need... Uh, eight reactor pressure vessels and one universal fluid port and that is how you craft the four different types of blocks that you will need for the exterior in addition to the four different types of blocks that you will need for the exterior of the structure to create the fluid cooled nuclear reactor from industrial craft 2 you will actually need some ic2 coolant to operate the reactor so this is a system that can actually automatically make ic2 coolant and what it is is a macerator that macerates lapis lazuli into lapis lazuli dust and then that dust is taken over to a fluid solid canning machine that is set to the fluid enrich mode. Now this will actually make IC2 coolant and that coolant is sent over here to this tank in this system. So that is actually how you make the IC2 coolant. To make a functioning fluid cooled nuclear reactor from the mod Industrial Craft 2, first off we need to make a hollow cube using the reactor pressure vessel blocks, the four different types of them that I showed earlier and we will need to make a hollow 5x5 cube. In the middle of this cube, we will actually need to put a nuclear reactor, which I'm going to build right now. And that nuclear reactor needs to have six attached reactor chambers like I am building right now. Now, it needs to look like this after you're done, uh, the reactor that is, the reactor itself. And so now I can continue building up this reactor pressure vessel. So the thing is about the reactor pressure vessel, we will need to use at least one of each type of the reactor pressure vessel blocks here, and we can put them anywhere in the structure. So for example, I like to put my reactor excess hatch right here, but I can add just as many as I want. Also, the uh, reactor redstone port, we can put these anywhere along with the fluid ports as well. So usually most designs use at least two reactor fluid ports. Some designs use a lot more. Uh, I have a design over there that I'm going to show later that uses quite a bit more. But anyways, we can get on with building the structure up and finishing it out. So this uh, can be a slightly time-consuming process here, but it shouldn't take too, too long. And like I said, hollow cube, 5x5x5, five by five by five, and in the middle is the nuclear reactor. So this is almost done and to check that the reactor is ready to go all we need to do is right click a reactor access hatch and we should see this GUI right here and that indicates that this reactor is ready to go to get a fluid cooled nuclear reactor up and running safely we will need to do several things first off we will need to put components into the interior of the nuclear reactor using one of the access hatches and I have chosen to use four of the quad fuel rod uranium variants, along with a bunch of overclocked heat vents, component heat exchangers, and component heat vents. Now, this is a design I have used in traditional nuclear reactors before, and using this configuration in a traditional nuclear reactor, we will get 320 EU per tick. However, if we use it in a fluid cooled reactor that is properly set up, we will get up to uh, and if we use an EU reader we can see about 650 EU per tick from this reactor design so that is pretty cool actually we can get even more if we were to use steam boilers but I'm not going to get into that uh, during this tutorial because that is uh, quite a bit more complicated of a setup than what I'm going to show today so the first thing we need to do is we need to actually get some some of the coolant into the reactor. So what I have is over here, I have uh, reactor fluid ports with fluid pulling upgrades and I have tanks of coolant, which I'm going to put right here. So if we put those down and we run back over to the access hatch, we should see that there is some coolant in there. So that is good. The next step is we need uh, some sort of system to actually get 
the coolant, uh, the hot coolant out of the reactor. And uh, sorry about that. I have a little system set up in the back just for uh, testing. And as we can see, if I take away that tank, the hot coolant is piling up and it has nowhere to go. Uh, if I were to leave this running, the reactor will heat up, and that is something we don't want to see. So what I'm going to do for right now is I'm going to turn it off, and I'm going to set up a little system to actually dissipate the heat. So what I'm going to use today is liquid heat exchangers, which is something you will need no matter uh, how you set this up. And what we need to do is we need to insert one fluid pulling upgrade in each one of these, one fluid ejector upgrade into each one of these, and then we will need to put in a bunch of the heat conductors. Each one of these heat conductors allows this liquid heat exchanger to dissipate 10 heat units per tick. So um, as you can see, this is lit up, so it is ready to transmit some heat uh, to an adjacent uh, block that can accept heat, which would be steam boilers and... Uh, what I'm going to use today, which is Sterling Generators. So let's go ahead and set these guys up with everything that they will need. Like I said, one of the fluid pulling upgrade, one fluid ejector upgrade, and then the heat conductors. And as we can see, all of these are now ready to go. The next step in this process is I'm going to slap down some of these Sterling Generators. And this is what I'm going to use to actually uh, turn the heat into usable energy. So first off, we can see that the copper side of the sterling generator is pointed the wrong way. So what I need to do is I need to take my wrench from Industrial Craft 2. I need to shift right click and that will move the copper, the copper variant or the copper side over to the opposite side. Now, if I were to not shift while I right click, it moves the copper point to the side that I click on. So I'm doing shift click to move it to the opposite side. Now I accidentally took away this sterling generator, so let's put it back real quick. And as we can see, these liquid heat exchangers are not doing anything. And that's because the sterling generators will not produce power unless they have an inventory in which they can put their power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put down an MFSU. And as we can see, this sterling generator is now producing 50 EU per tick. And if we run over here, we should see the IC2 coolant slowly draining down. Now, if we go ahead and connect up the other sterling generators to the battery, we should see that they are now producing power and that this should be draining quite a bit more quickly. So that is how you turn the IC2 hot coolant back in or turn it into power. And uh, meanwhile, it turns the hot coolant back into the cold coolant, which can be recirculated back into the reactor. So that is how you operate a fluid cooled nuclear reactor. Now I'm going to show three scenarios in which you will want to avoid when building your fluid cooled nuclear reactor. The first scenario is a scenario in which you forget to put in coolant. If we run this reactor, this reactor will start to get hot. And as we see the core temperature will build, the components will also start taking a lot of damage and this reactor will eventually explode. This second reactor here is a reactor that has coolant, but both of the buffers are full. Uh, primarily the hot coolant buffer is full so if I turn this on it will also start to acquire core heat because the heat has nowhere to go because it has no hot coolant that it can make out of the cold coolant so therefore the heat will start to acquire in the components and in the core itself this reactor will also eventually explode this last scenario is a scenario in which you have everything set up correctly except that the energy from the sterling generator has nowhere to go so basically the sterling generator will stop accepting hot coolant and therefore the liquid heat exchanger will stop working and the hot coolant will build up in the reactor if we turn this reactor on it will also start to build up core temperature and uh, core heat and the components will also start taking damage this reactor will eventually explode as well so these three are scenarios in which you can easily blow up your nuclear reactor that is fluid cooled. Uh, a note of caution, if you do build the fluid co cooled reactor from Industrial Craft 2, be excessively careful. Double check everything because they are really, really easy to accidentally do something wrong and then set them up so that they will eventually explode. So there are a couple of items that you can use in the traditional nuclear reactor that you cannot use in the fluid-cooled nuclear reactor. And those items are the condensators. The 
RSH condensator as well as the LZH condensator. They will not work in a fluid cooled nuclear reactor, but obviously you can use them in a traditional nuclear reactor. So wrapping up, the fluid cooled nuclear reactors are a little bit dangerous, but they are also very, very fuel efficient. They will produce more power than, a, than an identical uh, regular nuclear reactor, but at the cost of space and complexity. So if you like this tutorial, definitely give it a like. If you enjoy watching automation type stuff in modern Minecraft, definitely consider subscribing to my channel because that's generally what I do. Uh, currently, I'm working on a 1 billion iron ingot challenge in which I'm running a Minecraft server and trying to get to 1 billion iron ingots. And so if you think that would tickle your fancy, definitely consider coming over to my page and checking that out. But anyways, signing off, I am Minecraft Phenom 8 and I will see you next time.